Hey guys, what's going on? Thank you so much for watching today. Welcome to Prehistoric Kingdom and in today's tutorial we are going to talk all about the basics of building. That way you can go ahead and get in and start building for yourself. If you find this video helpful, go ahead and leave a like down below and let's go ahead and dive in. First thing you're going to do is go to your modular pieces tab right down here and this brings up the entire list of all the pieces that you can build with. Across the top here we have some organizational tabs that just groups building pieces into different categories or you can search for specific building pieces with this little search bar here. Now let's just go ahead and pick out the first one, this floor flat piece. So this is obviously a floor piece and you can see it comes out with a grid surrounding it. If you click on this little toolbox tab right over here, this is going to bring up all of the options that we need for this specific piece. Now, if I was to place this, for example, here, and then start building around it, you can see that the pieces snap to the grid. This is an easy way if you want to make a really symmetrical build or something that is really easy to kind of space out, keep it all aligned and everything, you can go ahead and do that. If you go down here to the menu, you can see you can adjust the grid width and the grid height. So if I adjust the grid width down to one meter, I now am still attached to a grid, but I have a much smaller spacing so I can more precisely place something. Now what's very cool about Prehistoric Kingdom, say I don't want the grid at all, I can do that as well. If I click this little button down here, toggles modular grid usage, if I click that, you can see now I'm no longer on the grid. I can move this piece anywhere I want to, any height, in any location, and I can build anything that I want. Now let's take our singular floor piece for example. If I click on this piece and I click V, or if I click on this piece and I click toggle advanced editing up here, you see we bring up this little gyro. Now this gyro looks very familiar to other games that have building mechanics like this. We have our X, Y, and Z axis that we can move around, but there's a little bit that's different on this one. So I can see here, I can move the piece side to side. I can move it closer and farther away or up and down, but there's these little center pieces in the middle here and what this does is it allows you to move the piece on two axes at the same time. So for example if I click the blue one here you can see how the up arrow and the right arrow are highlighted. This is going to allow me to move the piece either up or right and left at the same time. If I click on this little red one here, the up and the back arrow are highlighted, meaning I can move the piece further away, closer to me, up and down at the same time. And then similarly, down here, you can see the right arrow and the back arrow are highlighted. I can now move the piece right or left or further or closer. That way I can move these on two axes if I want to make sure to get the piece in the exact place that I need it. If we move over to our rotation, edit tool, you can see we have the same similar colors. We have a green rotation, which is going to rotate around clockwise or counterclockwise this way. We have a blue rotation, which is going to rotate the piece around this way, or the red one, which is going to rotate around this way. You can also grab the outer circle and rotate it this way. You can rotate uh, all around like this. If you just click in between the lines, you can see how this blue kind of lights up. You can take the piece and rotate it any which way you want moving your mouse. So it really gives you a lot of freedom to move the piece however you want. The last tool that I want to talk about is going to be our scaling tool. Now let me go ahead and get out of this and make this flat again. Again, if I click V on my keyboard or up here on the toggle advanced editing, I bring up my little gyro again and this time I have my scaling tool. If you click on this little white box and drag back and forth with your mouse, you can make the object bigger or smaller proportionate to what the original object was. It's a really good way to make the item either bigger or smaller without ruining any of the textures that are painted on the object. Now say for example, I want this platform to be this size but skinnier. If I drag this green one down, I can make the platform skinnier or fatter. 
Similarly, if I want it shorter or longer this way, shorter or longer that way, you can see you can really scale the object however you want. The only thing you'll have to be aware of is that some of the textures stretch better than others. So just play around with it and make sure that you like how it's looking. To rotate all through these options, you hit V. You can see I have my rotational tool. If I hit V on the keyboard again, I have my scaling tool. And if I hit V again, I have my advanced movement tool. You can, of course, change this key binding in the settings, but by default, it is set to the letter V on your keyboard. Alternatively, if you want to just click on these, of course, you can. The last one here is just going to be a free movement. This brings the object onto your cursor and you can take it anywhere you want just by moving your cursor and placing it by clicking your left mouse key. One last little tip I want to talk about is if you're in your advanced movement here and you click over off to the side, you can see it places the item. If you hit control V, it's going to duplicate this item and bring up the advanced movement tool, meaning that I can now take this object and advanced move it from the original placement. If I again click off the object over here, I can continually place multiples of this item as many as I want by dragging and then clicking off the object, dragging and then clicking off the object. Alternatively, you can click and then click the finalize editing. I have gotten into such a habit of building quickly where I just drag, click, drag and click and move on uh, like that. Going back to our single piece here, let's talk about this tab, the styling toolbox. Almost every object I believe is recolorable. So if you click on the styling tab and go to object color, click on the color box that's there, you can see it brings up the complete freedom of whatever color you'd like. And once you pick a color, it adds it to the recently used colors and you can easily go back and forth between a couple colors that you're deciding on just by clicking this previously used squares here. Now, if you want to use a material that's already set in game, you can also do so just by clicking on the pattern that you want to use. You can see that's modern. We also have tropical patterns as well. We have basic patterns, which is just glass. And then we have backstage, which is some brick and then also some like metal graded uh, pattern. So now let's go ahead and talk about scaling and rotation a little bit more. And for this, let's go ahead and use some rocks. That way I can kind of show you how I created some of the rock work you see in this habitat. If I bring a rock out and I hold shift, I can raise and lower that rock into the ground or above the ground to get the correct placement. If I hold Z or hold X, it'll rotate it around either clockwise or counterclockwise. And that way you can place your rocks however you'd like. If I click and place this rock, you can and then see that the next rock snaps back to the original position. Let me rotate it a bit more so you can see. So say I rotate this one sideways, I'm gonna click and place it. The next rock that I have is back in the original placement from when I brought it out in the menu. You can do this also with scaling. So if I scale this rock way up, I click in place. The next rock that I have is going to be the original size and the original orientation. You can, however, change this. Say you want to place a whole bunch of little rocks. All I have to do is go down here and there's a locks object scale and a locks objects rotation. If I click both of these, what's going to happen is I'm going to rotate this rock sideways and I'm going to shrink it way down so that it's nice and tiny. The next rock that I have is going to look just like the first rock, so on and so forth. So I can place a whole bunch of tiny rocks or similarly, I can shrink it or scale it way up and I can have a whole bunch of big rocks. I can also rotate it and it's going to keep that rotation. Each rock that I place is going to be an exact duplicate of the rock I placed previously. 
You can turn one of these off, both of them off, and really get precise with your item placement. I also want to mention that objects like rocks can also be placed either on or off the grid. So for example, this rock right now is not on a grid. You can see I can move it around. If I place one, the next one is not on a grid. I can place it anywhere I want to. However, if I do want to use a grid, if I bring a rock out and down here on the right hand side, toggles modular grid usage, and and then snaps objects to multiple points in a grid, I now have a rock that will place on the grid and you can see I can place each rock at a very equal distance from the first one because I am snapping to this grid. Just like the other items, you can make this grid bigger so you can place them at further distances apart or you can adjust the grid height so that when you raise and lower them, they're going to snap to certain points. It's a really good way, again, if you're trying to make really symmetrical builds or you wanna build really quickly and you want your object to snap to the other objects you're building with. You can turn the grid on or off for basically any piece in the game. The very last thing I want to talk about is building groups. So as soon as you bring an object out, let me go ahead and turn off the grid. That way we have free movement of our rock. As soon as I place it, you can see we build in modular group 441 for me. In this park, I'm on group 441. This blue border goes around your screen to let you know you're building in a group and any piece I place in this group is going to be grouped together. So if I right click and get rid of my object, right click again and get out of my group, you can see over here on the right hand side, this is modular group 441 that's selected and it has selected every single rock that I have placed in this group. If I get out of this menu and I'm just looking at my objects, I can double click to then start building in this group again and I can delete individual rocks or if you just click one, if you're completely out of it, click once, you can delete the whole group together. The reason modular building groups are helpful for me is recoloring or scaling and moving them all together. So if we go back into our group here, if we hit control A, it's going to select all of the objects that are in this group. And if I hit V, I can then either scale them up or down all together. I can move them all together and I can also rotate them all together. The thing I use this most for is actually recoloring. Coloring. So you can see here we have all of our rocks together, but we have different rocks. So if I hit control A, we can take the color over here and we can select a different color for every single rock in our group at once without individually selecting them. Where this gets a bit tricky is if you want objects that are all recolorable, but you want to recolor them all together. If I were to mix this with other recolorable objects and then hit control A and select them all, it's going to recolor all of your objects together. So for this reason, I recommend editing in modular groups, but when you're done placing rocks, go ahead and exit the group, grab your other piece, and it's going to start a new building group. You can see this is modular group 400. 142. That way you can either select this one right here and recolor all of your wood pieces at the same time, or you can select this one over here and recolor all of your rocks at the same time. It makes it a little bit easier and that way you don't have to worry about um, changing the color of all your objects. And this one I pick similar colors, but you get the point. So that's it. That's all of the basics of building in Prehistoric Kingdom. If there's anything you feel that I missed or anything you have questions on, please feel free to leave those down below in the comment section, or you can head over to our Discord channel where we have a specific channel dedicated to Prehistoric Kingdom, and you can ask any questions you might have there. Again, if you found this video helpful, please do leave a like down below and hit that subscribe button if you're interested in any further Prehistoric Kingdom content. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will talk at you in the next video. Bye!